Okay, so let's begin. So last time we talked about conditional uh, expressions, right? So what do we mean by conditional expressions? Well, let's go back to what programming is, right? So programming is you telling the computer what to do, right? So you're saying do this, then do that, then do this, then do that, then do that. And this, this series of steps that we're describing, we refer to as an algorithm, right? So this step-by-step -step process is referred to as an algorithm. So the question is, what happens if you have to make a decision somewhere along the way? So you're telling the computer, okay, do this, then do this, then do this, and then somewhere you get some value that represents a person's age. And based on age, you need to make a determination of which code you need to execute. Should you, I don't know, send them an email or should you, I don't know, SMS? Should you do this or should you do that or should you do that? This decision-making mechanism where you're deciding, should I do this or that, we do using a conditional, syntactically we call it an if statement, right? So we simply say in our code, if, for example, uh, the person's age is greater than 18 and is less than 21, you know, let them into the restaurant. If their age is greater than 21, let them in, but also you can serve them alcohol. Actually not greater than, greater than or equal to, right? 21, okay. But if they're less than 18, uh, that is to say else, for all other conditions, I'm sorry, we cannot let them into the restaurant, they're too young, right? That's one example of sort of a conditional thing, right? If this, then that. And syntactically, the way that would look like is this. So you say, let's create two variables. I forgot, how do I make a variable again? Const. Const. Uh, and some name. What should I give them, what, what name should I pick? Sure, so the name depends on what value I want to give it, and let's just say for this example, let's give a different example, I'm tired of age. Let's give name, ah, name, uh, and let's call it Sevak. Okay, so what is this, this right here? It's a string. There are two ways of making a string that I've told you about, there are others, there's new string, don't worry. What other way can I make a string? Double. With double quotes, exactly. I could just as easily have done this, right? Okay, so this is fine. So I have a name with the text sevak inside of it, okay? And now I can say if name is, you know, Ruben. Yeah, exactly, console.log, do not let him in. He's crazy, okay. Uh, else if name is, uh, give me another one, Boros, is that okay? Bo Boros, sorry, With a <laughs> content, everyone, good, okay, all right, if that's the case, then console.log Boros rocks, yeah, uh, actually let's console two things, console.log let me tell you this, Bogos rocks. And then else for all other conditions, that is to say the conditions that do not match any of our if statements, we will console dot, dot log, eh, it's, it's, it is sevak. And we get, ah, eh, it's sevak. Okay, now if I were to change sevak to say Bogos, I get that. What if I were to change it to Poros? What would I get on the screen? Eh. Eh. It is Sevak. Why? Is name Ruben? No. Next. If name is Boros? Nope. Next. All other cases go here. You see? Now here if I did if, you know, and then I say, you know, name is uh, Joe, now I get nothing. Why? Because this fails, this is not execute, this fails, this is not execute, this fails, this is not execute, nothing executes. So let me add an else. Console.log, okay, okay, I ran, yay. If I change this to Ruben, what do I get? 
Do not let him in. Crazy. Okay, Boros, we got. Uh, how about Joe? <laughs> Makes no sense, but that's not the point. Okay, good. Are we getting this? Yeah, we know how to make conditions. Okay. Now here's an interesting thing. We talked about bully, truthy and falsy values. Does anyone remember in JavaScript, what are the falsy values? Zero. 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 So zero. Undefined. Undefined. Nan, not a number. Null, which is this weird thing that we don't, we're not going to talk about. Just me. It's another way of saying undefined, sort of, but not really. Keep going. Empty space, like a, not empty space, empty string. Empty space would be this, that, right? That's not falsy. This is falsy. So empty string. Keep going. Minus zero. Minus zero. What? <laughs> Who taught you math? <laughs> no, no, not minus zero. Okay, come on, give me more. False. Very good. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, did I get them all? Yeah, I think that's it. Undefined, null, anything else that's empty? No, true would be the opposite of that. OK, that's it. Everything else in JavaScript is truthy. Truthy being it's more here than here. OK. Now that you understand this, remember this logic here that we were going like true and false, and then we are saying the result of this would be, what's the result of that? False. false. Okay, and then we can go like, you know, like that. True. True. True, okay. So let me explain something very important. The way JavaScript actually executes this. What JavaScript does is consider this. First of all, instead of true and false, let me go uh, zero, empty string, uh, something that is truthy, eight. The number eight is truthy, right? Here's what JavaScript does. When you have ors, it will start from the left to the right and return either the first falsy value, sorry, the first truthy value, or the last value. Is this truthy? Yes or no? no? No. It's zero, right? Zip, nothing, bad. Oh, okay, so it keeps going. Is this truthy? No. no. Is this truthy? Yeah. So the result of this expression is actually eight. No. Gotcha. In JavaScript, it doesn't return true. True and false is returned by things like this. You know, uh, some, some variable, A, B. Like these things here, or less than, or less than or equal to, yes, this will return Boolean. True or false, it either is or it is not. Operators like this, or and and, do something different. This is what I'm explaining to you. Watch this. Let's change this for a second. Let's do, uh, what's an nan, or, uh, what's another one, uh, undefined, or, uh, I don't know, 10, or false. What is, exactly. What? What's the result of this expression? Ten. Ten. Again, look, it goes until it finds the first truthy value and returns it. Is this truthy? No. Falsy. Good. Is this truthy? No. Falsy. Is this truthy? Yeah. Yes. So the result of this whole thing is ten. Is ten falsy or truthy? Good. That means if I were to take this expression and put it into an if statement, what does this turn into again? True. Not true. Ten. ten. Is ten truthy? Yeah. That means the code inside of here will run. You guys kind of get this? Let's keep going. Let's try a few more examples. Uh, let's see. Give me some falsy values. Okay, null. Zero. Empty string. Good. Okay, give me one truthy value. Any truthy value you want. Huh? True. 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 Uh, empty, empty string is falsy. Give, give me... Empty space. Good. Empty space is a space, right? It takes up room. It's truthy. And then give me falsy, something falsy. N or f false. How about that? What is the result of this? 
this guy, this, so it, is this truthy? No. Is this truthy? No. Is this truthy? No. Is this truthy? Yes. This is what is returned, so all this turns into that. Yes. Wait, oh, just one second. Go. What is hierarchical? Hierarchical. Go. Ah, it will return the first one. Good question. So let's go back to this. So let's, so we have this and we have true and we have uh, some number. This is truthy, that is truthy, and that is truthy, correct? It will start here, truthy or not? No. Truthy or not? No. Truthy or not? No. Truthy or not? Yes. That is returned for the entire thing. So if you had this in an if statement, if, what does this turn into? Empty space. Is empty space truthy? That means this code here will run. Yes, sir. Now, so and is the opposite. And does the opposite. So watch. Now suppose we have uh, some truthy condition, like you know some number, and another truthy condition, like a text, and another truthy condition, like true, and a falsy condition, like nan, and uh, some truthy condition, like you know yay. Nice. It will return the first falsy value or the last value. In other words, is this falsy? No. Keep going. Is this falsy? No. Is this falsy? Is this falsy? That's what it's returned. So this returns nan. So that means, again, if you had this in an if statement, if blah, this will turn into what? Nans. And is nan truthy or falsy? That means the code inside of here will no. not run. Make sense? So if you had an else here, this is the code that would run. So let's do it. Console.log. OK. Got it? OK ran. Huh, did not. With me? OK, let's do a few more. So let's have. Uh, const a or result b the let's see what do we want to do let's have it be uh, a truthy value true and another truthy value some text and hang on let me hide this so you don't know what's what's coming uh, a falsy value like zero and a truthy value like true what is inside of result Zero, right. Is this falsy? No. Is this falsy? No. Is this falsy? Yes. So result gets zero. So therefore here we do result and we get falsy. So this does not. What if we do not? Aha. Uh -huh. Remember, not returns a Boolean. So zero not returns. True. Right. What about if I did? True. Why? This will turn it to true. This will turn that true into false. This will turn that false back into true. Got it? OK. So now let's go back to here and let's try another example. So let me cut. How do you know? Huh. Console. Um, okay, so now let's do this. And 10 and 1 and yay and um, um, da, da, 83. Go. What's the result? 83. Remember, it either returns the first falsy value or the last value. Yeah? So look, it goes, is this falsy? No. 
Is this falsy? No. Is this falsy? No. Is this falsy? No. Is this falsy? No. Is this falsy? No. But we're done. So we return that last value. So if we console.log result, we get the last value. If we were to add a falsy value before, though, like 0, we get that. Is this falsy? No. Is this falsy? No. Is this falsy? Yes. That's it. Got it? Now, sorry, just one second. Now what we can do is take this result and put it into an if condition and console.log, OK, or else console.log, OK, OK. And we get OK, OK. If that we made this truthy, like 99, the result is 83, putting 83 in here will give us OK, OK. In this case, result becomes an alias to 83, and so result is 83, right? Which is truthy, which is why we print OK. You guys with me? Yes? OK, now I could also just take this value here and copy directly here. Same result. Make sense? Now you know how variables work. Anyone here confused about, please be honest with me, any of the things that I said regarding conditionals or Boolean logic? Everyone understands this. Perfect. Yes, sir. It's a bitwise operator. It's a bitwise operator. It's a whole lot of Yes, sir. Good question. So now, so now, based on what I told you, try to extrapolate the answer. Suppose we had, let, let's just stick to regular booleans now. True and true or false. What do you suppose the answer will be? Yeah, now extrapolate, why do you think it's true? Because and will say, wait, is this falsy? Nope, it's not. Is this falsy? It's not. So it returns this one. So this part is true. Then or returns the first truthy value, which in this case is this one. So it returns true. So now let's change that to not true or false, but truthy falsy. Let's have it be, I don't know, some number and, you know, some text and a falsy value like zero. What's the answer here? Keep going. Come on. The string. Look, and will return either the first falsy value or its last value. Is this falsy? Is this falsy? But it's the last value for and, right? There's no more and after that. So the value for the left side is this. Yes? Or will return the first truthy value. Is this truthy? Yeah. Done. We're done. You guys getting this? Yes. Okay. Okay. What about this? What about if we did uh, 89, 83? Anything? What happens now? Same thing. Good, 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 good. Wow, that was a little too much. Okay. <laughs> All right. What about if we do this? Is this truthy? Is this, sorry, is this falsy? Is this falsy? What does or do? It returns the first truthy value or the last value. Is this truthy? So the last value. What is the last value? Which is? You know that, right? It's false. So this, not 83. So 83 is truthy. If you not it, it returns a Boolean false. 
So now, if we console.log, we get false. And if we do, we get false. Interestingly, by the way, in JavaScript, a nice trick for those of you, if you want to change, convert a value that is truthy or falsy into an actual Boolean, you cannot not it. Look, const a has some value, I don't know, 44. It's truthy, right? If I console.log not not a, it's going to give me the Boolean value of that. If it's truthy, it becomes true. If it's falsy, it becomes false. Look, instead of 44, let me do 0. Now 0 not 0 returns false, not false returns true, uh, sorry. Not 0 returns true, not true returns false. I got it. How's it Mike? Definitely, you get, you're getting this, yes? Sure? You ready for a quiz? Yeah. I love you guys. Okay, cool. No, don't worry, no quiz today, but awesome. All right, good. No, because I was, I, was, I was waiting for, oh no, you know, but you're like, yeah, bring it. Oh, okay, good. Okay, good. So we understand conditionals, yeah? So the next thing that we went and talked about was functions. So just very quickly, I'm not going to go through the whole process again, but just so you remember, just because I made the box. Let me use the box, yeah? This is the same one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, give me a break. I got to sleep at night. Okay. So, about, wait, let me just make sure that, oh. Okay, so we have a box. Uh, it's a magic box. I know you, I've, we've been through this again, just to refresh your memory. It's a box. It can take values through this hole and return results through that hole, right? So what I can do is I can give it some values like a four. I don't know, give me another value. Five. <laughs> so original. A five. And so I get the five and I throw it in there and I go, Agra Cadabra. How did you know? Wait, let me, Bossy, get at me up. <laughs> He's right, it's 10. <laughs> All right, so the output of this is 10, right? Okay, cool, so it's like this magic box that knows how to take in two numbers and then produce some result. Kind of cool. Uh, what's the code? So it, apparently though, inside of it, there's, yeah, there's code that will execute that result, right? And here it is. It's going to return, that is to say, return, push out of this side, the result of running this equation. Base times height divided by two. Area of a triangle, right? Okay, so it might make sense to maybe also give this box a name, like compute area of triangle or just area of triangle. And so now, whenever I want to know the area of a triangle, I don't have to go and remember the formula, because you know I have bad memory, um, or Google it. I can just use this magic box and just give it two numbers, and palm, I have my answer. If only I could take this with me to exams, right? And then I would just, a bunch of these. And then I would never have to remember a formula again. But not just formulas, any old operation. So what's cool about this box is that it can run some code, right? Um, and the code doesn't have to be just one line, like, you know, base times height divided by two. It can be an entire algorithm. Remember an algorithm being a series of steps. Um, so what this basically is, is a way of packaging some code so that you can use it later. So you have some package, some code. It has a name and it has some way of running it. You can give it inputs, it can produce outputs. There are basically three categories of these boxes. One category takes an input, returns an output. The second category takes an input and just does something. It doesn't return anything, it just does some work. Whatever that work might be. Another box, you don't give it input, it just gives you output. It just does some stuff and then gives you an answer. Got it? Okay. So. Three things we, or a few things we need to figure out. One, how do we make one of these boxes in our code? 
how do we run this box? So I ran it by just giving, you know, throwing things in there and going agrocadabra, right? In code, we do it a, different, a little differently, as you could maybe imagine. So let's do this. So first thing, we need to make one of those boxes, right? So we do box. No, I'm just kidding. We call that box a function. So we write the word function. Quite intuitive, I think. So then we need to make that whole. You see that hole? Me too, Sonic. Remember that hole. We're gonna draw. <laughs> We're gonna draw that hole. Okay. Fine. Now we're going to have the stuff that's where we're going to specify the code inside. Remember this. Yeah, well, the, remember when we specified if, condi if conditions or conditionals, if else? We had this way of specifying like the beginning and the end of the code inside, the block, if you will. How did we do this? Do you remember? Curly braces. Curly braces. We do the same thing here. So here we, we write the word function. We make the whole for the function, then we specify the beginning and the end of the code we're going to write, just like in an if statement. OK so far? OK. Now let's, well, we, it's good to refer to this function somehow, so we should name it. When we wanted re to refer to the number 18, how could we do it in the past? What were we doing? Yeah, we would make a variable throw that number in there, and then we could use that variable in our code, right? Remember, we could do something like const age, and then inside put in something like, you know, 83, right? And then we can use age everywhere. Same thing here. We can do const. Let's give it a name, but a useful name. So in this case, we're, compute, we're writing the function that will compute the area of a triangle. So let's call it area, area of triangle and put function inside. Question, what have we done here that I have not yet done here? Pay attention. Semicolon. So semicolon, remember, is like the end of the expression. It's like the end, it's like the period after a sentence. You made your statement and you're done. Next. Remember, we're doing a bunch of these, right? That's what an algorithm is. It's a series of these steps. So here we said, Put 83 inside of age. Done. Now we're saying put this function inside of this area of a triangle. Done. Got it? Now, uh, this is where we're going to write the code. But we need some inputs, right? So we need to receive values through that hole, right? So we need something, some way of transferring values, information, data. Remember, information in programming is stored in variables, right? We could store 83, just like here, inside of this variable, etc. So what we do is, in the whole, we specify the names of our variables. So what do we need to compute the area of a triangle? Base and height, right? So we say base. Uh, we need some way to delimit the fact that we're about to start another one, so we do semicolon, height. Okay, so so far we have a box, a function, that will take two things, a base and a height, run some code here, and we're done. Now let's define the code that it will run, the steps that it will take to actually do its work. Yeah? Well, it needs to uh, do base, what's the area of a triangle again? Base times height. Divided by 2. And let's just, for clarity, specify parentheses. Again, according to order of operations, of course, we do multiply and then divide just in the, or left to right. We know this. But just for clarity, we do that, right? So it's easier to read. And we're done with our expression. OK. Are we done? There's something missing here. So, so far, all I've done is written some code inside of the function. But the function at some point has to, in this case, give, right now the function doesn't give me anything. It doesn't return anything out the other hole. 
It's just doing some work. In this case, just doing base times height divided by two. I need to tell it, hey, return or give back something out of the other side. The way to do that is to use the return expression. So let's stick this into a variable, const, const result. And now I'm going to return result. Return again means take the result, whatever is in here, throw it out the other side. Got it? Okay, so it takes as input through this hole, base and height, and out the other hole it, stick, it throws out result, which inside has the result of doing base times height divided by 2. Any questions up until this point? Yes, sir. I think I saw Mian Kamitz the name aside Miropa. In other words, he's saying, I think, what what if we just did this? No, uh Oh like function is doors. Function is doors, console.log on ink, area sense? Wait, wait, I just want, I want to know what he's saying. Tell me. Ah, it's got side chess Okay, we'll get to that in one moment. Just wait, wait, that. I, I, I know what you're saying. Okay. So, wait, you guys understand, but I want to be clear that you understand that this. And that is the same thing, yes? Here, we're just taking this result, putting it into this variable, and then returning it. Uh, here, we're just returning that value directly. The result is the same. Yes, we all understand this? It's, it's also the same if I did this. Look, I could have done const uh, our res result one, uh, base time, times height, and then done const const final result is result 1 divided by 2 and then returned final result. You understand that this is also the same thing, yes? Is, yes sir? What is the difference between the console log and the return? Okay, uh, I'll tell you what console log is in one moment. Just hold that thought, I'm coming, I'm coming to there. Okay, so return just means what, just remember what return is. Return is what's going to come out of that other hole. So you know what return is. I'll tell you what console log is, but return you know, yes? It's the thing that is going to go outside of that other hole. Yes? Okay, so now, now, look, we have this function. Let's use it. So how do we actually use it? How do I call the function? I can't just do agracadabra and, you right? I have to actually call it. Well, the first thing I would do is I have to refer to it by name, exactly. So I just take this name. There it is. So all I've done is I've just referred to it. Just like here, I could have just done age. Okay, all this means is if I do age here, this just means one, right? Sorry, 83. Wait. Age is 83. You understand that, right? Age underneath the covers just gets converted into 83. Why? Because it is 83. Yes? We understand that. In the same way, area of a triangle, what is area of a triangle? It's this function. So it's literally like taking this and putting it here. That's what it is. It's just a function, right? It's just a name of a function. So, so what? So I have a function here. So I have to run it, right? I have to go, right? Okay, so how do we, how did I run that? What's the first thing I did? I put values in the hole. Sorry, right? I put values in the hole. Okay, so let's put values in the hole. I'm going to draw the hole. You guys are never going to forget this. 
I put val I'm going to put values into the hole, 4 and 5. Do you see how I'm literally, there's a hole, and I'm putting values into the hole? Wait, laughing aside, you see how, the, this, is, this is real, I'm not kidding. This is actually how it works. You're putting 4 and 5 into that hole, and what it's doing is it's going from here, going there. 5 is going, going there. Does that make sense? So then, so the value of base in this case is going to be 4. The value of height is going to be 5. It's going to run. And the result of this is the value that gets popped the other side. What is the value of this? 10. So this gets replaced with 10. Which I can, so therefore, I could stick this into a variable, const you know, result. And then I can do whatever I want with it, including console.log result plus, I don't know, times 2, for example. And here I get 20. There was a question. Wait, wait. Uh, go. Yes, sir. In charge of Asia is? Ah, it, okay, I was just, okay, wait, 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 it's, I understand his confusion. So the reason why I did, okay, so the reason why I did this is just as an example of variable value, variable value, to explain that this is just a value just like 83, no difference. You're right, in this code, age is actually not used, so we don't need it, you're right. Okay, John. Yes, sir. Yeah, so remember a variable is the same thing as its value, right? So I could literally just take this and put it here directly and get the same result. Yeah, of course. Remember, again, so you might say, why don't we just put everything on top of each other? It's so we don't duplicate. You don't write 83 50 times, you just say age, and then age can be anything, right? If you want to run the code again for someone who's younger, you just change age and everything else just runs. Okay, interesting. What would happen if I did not return? In other words, what would happen to that box if nothing came out of the other box? Uh, sorry, out of the other hole. Nothing. Nothing comes out of the other hole. So what is the value of nothing in JavaScript? Undefined. Undefined. So the result of running this, the result, if I just write result here, if I don't return, is undefined. And by the way, if I were to multiply it times a number, what would I get? Not a number. It's saying, what are you doing? You can't multiply undefined by 20. That makes no sense. Un not a number. Nan. Is Nan truthy or falsy? Good. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, so one common thing in Java, uh, I don't want to get into object. Yes, I'll tell you later. Yeah? F for now, just, yeah. Yes. Um, other questions? Yes, sir. Sorry, you told that um, the processor runs or reads the codes from up to down, okay? And when the processor wants to do that, it should, uh, it should come from up to down and yes. again. Yeah, so what happens is, look, it starts here, right? The execution engine, think of it, don't worry about the process, it's too low level. Think of the execution engine that then, yes, turns it into bits that then the processor runs, fine. Uh, it starts here and it says, okay, there's a variable and there's a function inside, got it. Then here it says, ooh, it's referring to a variable, but I know the variable, it's been declared, there it is. So, and what's inside is a function, so it will run this function giving it 4 and 5, so the 4 will go here, 5 will go here, it will run it, and then the result of that 
it will put into this. Yeah. Now again, what is the result of running area of a triangle right now? Is there a return here? It's commented out. Remember, commenting means don't, it's just don't run anything. Ignore it. Commenting is like ignoring. In this case, this, there's nothing that came out of the other side. Nothing means undefined. Yeah? So that means result is undefined. If I were to make it a value, fine. Let's keep it simple. Let's do a basic function like, OK, let's write a function together. I want to write a function that, yes? Mm -hmm. Also. Ha, ah, you mean a function declaration instead of an expression? Forget those for now. Ha, ah, I know you can do that, but do this for now. There's a difference, yeah. We can come to office hours, I'll explain it later. Uh, or after class. Um, yes? What about You can do that. OK, you can do that. So look, look, look. What he's saying is, what if we were to just have the, the behavior of the function, console.log, final result. And then all we do is, we don't need all this stuff anymore. You just call it, and it will console log. Hey, guys, back to you. What does this look like? OK, again, remember, you're never going to forget. What does that look like? Oh. oh. What are you doing here? <laughs> Putting a value into the hole. And what, the, what it does, what kind of a function is it? Is this the kind that takes input and returns output? Or the kind that takes input and does something? Or the kind that does not take input but has an output? Which one is it? It takes input, input being the text to print, like the value, and it doesn't have an output, it just does something. And the thing that it does is it writes somewhere. Where does it write? Yeah, now watch this. Ha! Console.log. What is he doing? Let's, let me add a syntax error so it doesn't run right away. Let me give it a val. What do you think is going to happen when I uncomment this? Ten. What did I do? I changed the, the value of log to not be the function that writes to the console, but instead to be this function. And what this function does is it takes the same value that console log does, but instead of writing to the console, it instead calls this alert. Which, what is alert? No, but what is it? It's a function. Look, it's got a hole. <laughs> it's a, here's the name of the function. Here's the value that I'm passing through the hole. Does it have an output? No, it doesn't return anything. Let's check if it has an output. Let's check. Const, const a. Wait, wait. Uh, oh, now I'm going to console log. It's going to alert. OK, fine. Console.log a. OK, so the first time is 10. That's that one, right? And the second one, undefined. Notice? Off. Does anyone know what, what I just did? An infinite loop. Console log calls itself, which puts in a dialog, it calls itself, puts a dialog, calls itself. So I'm getting this infinite recursion of dialogues that I'm stuck in forever and ever and ever. All right. Oh, crap. How do I get out of this? There must be some way. Die. OK, wait, now I have to Google how to stop dialogue alerts. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Command Q? No, Command, oh, Command Q will, ah, yeah, it killed, OK, it killed Chrome. All right, good. 
It helped. Thank you. I appreciate the. All right. So where were my slides? Local host, 7,000, oh, 3,000, uh, bump. Wait, not, not week zero, week one. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Everything is okay. All right, so did I answer, sir, did I answer your question about what console log is? Yeah? Easy, right? It's just a box with a hole in it. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, so uh, have a look at this one. What kind of function is this? Is it the kind of function that takes an input? No, no look, the hole is empty. <laughs> OK, so it takes no value into the hole. Uh, does it have an output? Does it return something out of the other hole? Yes? Where is the return? If it doesn't have return, then nothing comes out the other side. Return is what says return this. It doesn't take inputs. It doesn't take outputs. It just does something. What do you suppose it does? Look. Yeah, it console locks three things, exactly. And since I'm calling it two times, A, and then I'm calling it again, I get CS110, CS110, introduction, blah, blah, blah. I can call it again. Let me call it a bunch of times, <laughs> just because I feel like it. Boom, 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 boom. A whole bunch of them. Kind of cool. So this maybe get, tells you something. The nice thing about packaging your code in a function is that then, with just one short call, you can rerun your function again and again and again, anytime you want. You can reuse your code. So remember how I told you that complex systems are made up of parts, like smaller parts that you then build on top of? Well, a function is exactly that, is you can have a small function that does something basic. In fact, let's do that. Let's compose, that is to say stick together, some functions. So let's create a simple function called uh, add or sum. Add. Let's call it add. Const add. What do you suppose this function will do? Add two numbers together. Okay, so what do I do? Function. What do I need? A hole. What does my, <laughs> what does it take? Specifically number one, number two? So it's only going to work with those two numbers? No. Oh, you mean num1, num2, or num, like variable names you meant. OK, cool. OK, so number one, fair enough, or number two. Cool. These are my arguments, or names of my arguments, the things that are going to go in through that hole. OK, so then uh, what would be, what do I do in this? OK, so number one plus number two. Okay, I added them together. Uh, am I done? I have, to, it has to, I have to tell it to push that out of the other side, right? So I return that. Okay, so now how can I use add? Well, I, I specify the name, of course. What do I have to do? Push things into the hole. So I make the hole and I push things inside. What do I push? Which numbers? One and two. One and two. OK. Exactly. This, produced, this resulted in three. It worked. I didn't see anything, but it did produce a three. So what I can do is stick that into a variable, const result, and then maybe console.log, console.log, that is to say, call the log function with a value, in other words, put it into the console logs hole, and then what it will do is it will draw that in the console. So let me do that. Result. Boom. Kind of cool. I can change the arguments. Oh, sorry. All right, not bad. I can call it again with different values. Wait, wait. I can take this, run it here with that, run it here with something else. 
A string, interesting. So what would happen if I passed one of the values as a string? It, stick them or concat, remember this word, it, it concatenate. You're right, it means stick. It will concatenate them together. What, did I hear a but why? Ah, but why? It doesn't matter what, space is just a character. It's a space character, right? Just like that. Yeah? So space, fine. And it will take 193, turn it into a string, which would be, so here's what it does. It does 193 plus gay, right? It first turns this into text, so that would be that. And then sticks them together, which would be that. And that's the output, and then this is then printed here. Yes, of course. OK, so uh, OK, so result is some number plus 1. OK, what does that do? Adds them. So what's the result of this? 984. So that means result, everywhere where you see result in code, if I console log result, it's the same thing as if I did this. Yeah? Result is an alias. It's a name for this value, for this result. I think that is clear. Yes? OK. If that's clear, now suppose 1 was a string. Nope. Remember, that the way the add operator works is it looks left, it looks right. If either one is a string, or if both, it will stringify the other if it's not a string and stick them together and return another string. Yeah? So what this is doing is it will take this, turn it into a string. So the underneath what's happening is this will get converted into this. Wait, that. And then that will get converted into stuck together, 9, 8, 3, 1. That is to say the characters of this and the characters of this will combine together to perform the string with characters of that. Yes, sir? And uh, if I want to add uh, many numbers, is there a universal way to just add them? Give me an example. Uh, you wrote number 1 and number 2. And uh, if I want many of them, many, uh, to add many numbers, Yes, but for that we need a looping structure, and we haven't gotten to loops yet. So for that we need recursion, which I think either next class or the class after we'll talk about that. So you will soon, okay? It's coming. Yes, sir. Yeah, of course. So look, guys, see that hole? I can put lots of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look. Const uh, func, which takes as a as function, a b c d. All right, look, 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 look. Ah. This then returns, let's say, a plus b plus c plus d. I can then call func with. Well, how? What is it expecting? It looks like it's four different numbers, right? So I can do one, two, three, four, five, five. And the result of that would be. Boros, sorry, and capital Boros. Actually, but variable names are lowercase, so sorry for all the Boroses out there. Uh, Console.log. OK, Bo interesting thing here. Look, wait, wait, da -da. interesting thing. In certain languages, there is a check that says your arguments have to match the expected variables. In JavaScript, that check does not exist. Case in point, how many variables does func want? Four. Four, A, B, C, and D. How many values am I passing? Five. five. So one would go into A, two to B, three to C, four to D, five, it's somewhere, but you don't see it as part of those variables. There's another thing called arguments. That, don't worry about it. 
as far as you're concerned, it just gets swallowed. Like, you just don't see it. It doesn't throw an error. The opposite is also true. If I pass in less, if I just pass in two numbers, what's going to happen? What would be the value of A? What would be the value of B? What would be the value of C? What is empty? Undefined. Undefined. If it's empty, if it has no value, it's undefined. Remember, an empty box is undefined. So if I don't pass a value to C, its value is undefined. So what we're doing is 1 plus 2 plus undefined plus undefined. You can't add undefined, therefore you get NAN. Yes, sir? It still works. Look, I can do it right now. Uh, use, use, same. Uh, don't worry about what he said. Um, other questions? Yes, sir? If you give the, in the function, if you give uh, that what it returns to a constant, yes. and let it be the yes, yes, yes. result, and then return the result, yes. can you use the result out of the function? No. It's, that, all the variables that you make inside of the function, oh, we'll talk about scoping later. This is a whole topic. But basically, all of them disappear when the function finishes. No, but can you use, as, use it as another vector? Inside the function, you can. The moment the function returns, it's done. You forget about ev all the state that's inside the function, all the variables you make, it disappears. So you can name another result out of the function? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, go. Uh, if we don't know how many values we are going to give the function. The, there's an arguments thing. I'll tell you later. Later, later. 